Now I'm going to take a step back from the technical developer functionality that we've introduced to the API and to the developer tooling ecosystem and talk about how these applications end up in DHS2 instances and how they can be better used um, in the 237 release. Um, to support that, we have redesigned the App Hub and introduced a number of important new features there as well. If you're not familiar with the App Hub, it is available at apps.dhs2.org. And you can see the list of all the applications that developers in the community have built, including UIO. And we are, uh, I'll talk a little bit about how UIO is using the App Hub and the App Management infrastructure to deploy more frequent and more re reliable updates to applications uh, on a different time scale than the every six month core releases. Um, some of the new features that have been introduced to the App Hub here, I will uh, show here. I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this user. I'm going to sign in again. One of the features that we've added is the ability to authenticate with GitHub. So if you have a GitHub account, you can log into the DHS2 App Hub. Uh, previously, we only supported Google. I'm going to go ahead and use Google for my authentication here right now to show this next feature. Um, this user has not uploaded any apps to the App Hub. Otherwise, you would see the applications that you have previously uploaded, including the ones that are still pending uh, approval. And some of the features that we've added to the App Hub today are uh, organizations. So in addition to being a user, you can also create an organization, which you can give a name and a, and a contact email address and then add other users to that organization. And that will allow all of the users uh, to upload and manage the same set of applications. For example, we would have one organization for the University of Oslo and the core applications. You might have another application for a particular HISP group or a particular uh, organization uh, that built, develops applications and wants to share them through the App Hub. We also have created a mechanism for API key generation. So as this user that's logged into the App Hub, I can generate API keys. This is very similar to what I just talked about with personal access tokens. Not as, as much control over what different API keys can do, but you can use this API key to authenticate as this particular user from a command line or a terminal or a, a integration script. Um, and again, you can only see this the first time you visit this page. If I refresh this page, I will see that that, uh, to that API key has been generated. Um, I can delete it, but I cannot see it again. Those are two of the features that have been added to uh, the App Hub. You can also see that we've significantly improved the interface overall of this App, App Hub uh, in the last year. You can see that for any given application, you have a, a description, screenshots, a list of the versions that have been uh, uploaded for this particular application, and you can see a lot more information in a more user-friendly way. We've also introduced a set of concrete guidelines for apps that are up uploaded to the App Hub and which will be used to evaluate those applications before they're approved for publication. Um, in general, those are useful and appropriate, generic and open source, well-designed and documented, and secure and performant. Um, there are very specific guidelines that you can find on the developer portal. So this is at developers.dhs2.org. If you go to documentation, click under guides, app hub, and you can see the app hub submission guidelines. And there are very specific guides, guidelines for what makes a quality DHS2 application and how you can uh, follow those guidelines to get your application approved and shared with the DHS2 community. <laughs> 